I wanted to address the very good question of why work should be defined the way it is as a force times displacement. <clears throat> and the reason why is that there are certain forces for which the work they do from point A to point B is completely independent of the path that the object takes. And this can be a powerful tool for simplifying our calculations. So these forces are called conservative forces. They're the ones where it's actually useful to have something like work. And gravity turns out to be a conservative force. So here's example one, example two, example three. And again, the point I'm trying to make is that for gravity, the work that it does is completely independent of the path taken by the object. So let's look at number one and figure out the work done by gravity. So we'll put in the force of gravity pointing down. That's mg. It points exactly in the same direction as the displacement vector, which I guess I could put in a little more formally as a delta y. Um, that displacement vector has a magnitude of h. So if I'm somewhat formal about it for a second, I can say the work done by gravity is going to be that mg vector dot product delta y vector. Now they point exactly in the same direction. So the angle between those two vectors is zero. So I don't have to worry about the cosine of theta in my work formula. I just get mg times the magnitude of delta y, which was just the height h. And I end up with mgh. All right, what about if my ball is, instead of dropping straight down, is rolling down a ramp at some unknown angle theta? How much work does gravity do? Let's get the force of gravity in here. And I know that a component of that is moving in the direction of motion. So if we take the component in the direction of motion, that's what we're going to use for getting our work. And that component that points in the direction of motion is going to be an mg sine theta. So this is one way to look at um, computing work. You can just find the component of the force in the direction of the displacement. Or if you like, you could use a dot product that gives you exactly the same thing. There's my displacement. I'm going to say it has a length of L. OK, then when I compute the work done by gravity, I get mg sine theta vector that looks kind of funny dotted into my displacement vector L and they point in exactly the same direction so again the cosine theta part of the dot product just comes out to one all right I need a little bit of simplifying here to figure out what's going on, and I have to use trig for that. So um, I can see a relationship between my angle and my height and the magnitude of my displacement. So I'm going to solve for L. L is h over sine theta. I'm going to plug that in over here, and I get mg sine theta times h over sine theta. And aha, the work done by gravity is exactly the same. In fact, it only depends on the vertical change of the object. So this one, example three, I'm not going to compute this right now. I made another video where I actually computed it, and it's a challenge problem. It's very intense to compute the work of this thing directly. But I put it here just to illustrate the utility of this path independence. So this was like two pages of calculus to solve this thing directly. But if I know for sure that gravity is a path independent force, so the work it does is independent of path, all I care about is the change in the y coordinate, that height h. And I know the work done by gravity is going to be mgh. And that's the reason all this stuff was invented, is to take advantage of things being simpler when I have a path independent force. Um, so I'll post a link to where I actually do this full video for the calculus-based physics class. And we do indeed come up with MGH at the end of the calculation.